Hi guys, Cornel de Tweer. Once again, welcome to my workshop. Today I want to show you a little bit on my table saw sled that I built recently. Now it's not a full build video. There's more than enough good videos on YouTube to show how to build a table saw sled. But I want to share with you some of the essential and some of the cool features that I think you should incorporate if you want to build your own table saw sled. So let's come a bit closer and, and dive right in. The first feature that you should keep in mind is obviously safety. And as on other videos that you would have seen, um, the key point is to add a box at the back to make sure that where the spinning blade comes out at the back, it's covered and you don't potentially get your finger into the blade here. The second safety feature that I added is this little stop block here at the end. As you can see, the sled overhangs the side of the table saw with about 20 millimeters. And then I've added the little stop block over here and this little bracket on the side of the table. So as it goes forward, the stop block will hit against the bracket over there. And that ensures that the blade doesn't come out at the back of the box. The first essential feature of the, the table saw sled is the back fence. The back fence, in my view, should be straight like, like this one and not as you would see on some of the table saw sleds, shaped like this here at the back. The key reason for this is this allows you to move your, your stop blocks at the top right across and you can get in right close next to the, next to the blade. If you had that type of shape, shape, your block would only have come up to a certain point and then you would either have to put a um, spacer in here or extender or something like that. So that in my view is the first essential part. The second essential part of the sled is are these um, replaceable zero clearance inserts. As you use the, the, the sled um, the blade will eventually wear away the area right next to your blade and then as the blade comes out at the bottom you will get some chip out over there. So therefore the important part is that you can replace these inserts. Or the next step on top of that is to make them adjustable. So that as they get worn away, you can just loosen these screws, move them a little bit closer, cut off a fresh um, section and off you go. Then you don't have to replace the whole insert. Now in my case, you can see, especially on the left hand side, I've got this, this gap over here. That is so that on this side, I can move it further away, put a dado blade in there and sneak, sneak it up onto the dado blade and use the same inserts with the dado blade as well. Then the next part is similar to the replaceable inserts at the bottom, is to also here yeah, in the fence where the blade comes out at the back of the piece of wood that you're cutting to have the replaceable inserts over there as well. As you can see, I didn't make these adjustable especially on the left hand side, I was afraid to put the, the bolt too close to where the data blade would come through. But um, next time I would probably make them a little bit wider so that these can also be a, a adjustable like the ones at the bottom. Next up are the T-tracks. As you can see, I got these nice clamps from, from Banggood. When you're cutting a small piece, you can take these clamps and clamp it right up close to the blade. And as you can see, I've spaced this from the blade so that even straight on, it doesn't cross the cutting path of the blade. And then you will see at the back, yeah, I've left quite a big, quite a big gap over there. That is in case I want to use a track style clamp like this and maybe want to clamp something that's high, then I can, can get these in there to, to clamp that down as well. Okay, so next up is, is the fence. Obviously at the top we've got the T-track for the stop blocks to slide in. I've also put um, two measuring tapes on the top here. One measuring from the right to the left and also another one measuring from the left to the right so that I can put my stop block on this side and cut on this side or on the other side as well. And then I've also put the T-track in the face of the fence so that similar to clamping something down on the, on the bed of the table saw, uh, on the sled I can also clamp something here to the face. I can either use 
the, the T-Track clamp or I can use some of these clamps here as well. Next up are the stop blocks. Let's start with a simple one first. Initially I just made a little block, put a bolt through there that runs in that T-Track to move the block up and down. Then I realized that let's just put a block at the top, glue that together. I've added a little clear piece of plastic sheet here with, with specific lines that measures or reads off the, the ruler. And there we go, there's the simple stop block. However, sometimes you may have a, a piece of wood that's not quite square on the one end, on the one side, and you may want to trim that off first, nice and square, before you flip it and cut it to length. Now, unfortunately, if you've got this one set up on the correct distance, then the block is in the way. So that's why I came up with this flip stop. In this one, your stop can flip up and away, move it across, cut off the first piece, and in that case, you probably want to flip it around, drop your flip stop in place, and make your second cut. The flip stop is also designed to flip up and away, so that even when you put something upright against the fence, that it flips out totally out of the way. Well, this flip stop is also exceptionally sturdy. It's not like some of the videos you see with some of those board flip stops where you push on it and it totally flexes out of the way. There's no way that this one will flex. And I haven't seen a video on, on something like this, so let's focus in a bit more detail as to how we made, I made this, this flip stop. So basically, the flip stop consists of two parts. It's the, the front one that flips up, and then just the, the carriage that runs on the, on the fence at the back. To start off with, the front part, I basically just did a normal box joint cuts in there. And then in the, the carriage at the bottom, also just the matching, matching box joint cuts. But if I left it there and just made the box joint cuts like that, the cut would have sat here, and when you flip it up, you would have it higher, but it would still be in the way for higher stuff to move past. So that's why on the front part, I've glued in these little um, spacers, and exactly the same on the ones on the carriage. And then just made sure before I glued them in, I drilled a six millimeter hole through them and obviously rounded over the edges. So basically made a little hinge out of these pieces of wood over there. Then I glued in a lock nut on the one side and just took a simple six millimeter um, bolt to put straight through there. Then obviously um, also made some gaps at the side, put in the clear plastic, and then I just still need to put the, the lines at the bottom to be able to read off the scale on the ruler. And then last but not the least, it's just the extension piece. It just have a little um, tenon here on the side, and basically slides into a matching mortise over here. And then just some of these bolts will hold it in place when I lock them in here at, on the back. So that then allows the, the slit to have a cutting capacity all the way to about 1.4 meters. No. Don't have much space here in my garage, so they basically just get stored here on the wall. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you've learned something and you've maybe take a few tips or things that you will incorporate into your table saw slit. And yeah. 
Thanks for watching. Until next time, God bless.